I think we can all agree how that ends. My name is Thomas and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over everything that you need to know about the new Pro Palette Assist feature that you can find on a few of the new Nissans. This is a brand new 2019 Nissan Rogue, specifically the SL all-wheel drive version. That means that it comes with the Pro Palette Assist feature that you can find on the Qashqai, the Altima, as well as the Rogue in 2019. Pro Palette Assist is the name that Nissan has given their semi-autonomous driving mode that came out on the Rogue a couple years ago. And the reason it came out on the Rogue first is because the Rogue is their most popular car out of their entire lineup. So they thought that it's best to introduce it on the most popular car so as many people get access to it as fast as possible. Now it's debatable if it's more of a semi-autonomous driving system or if it's just more of an advanced cruise control, but I'll get more into that in a second. This Rogue was lent to me by Nissan, specifically Fish Creek Nissan. So go and show them some love I've linked all their social media in the description down below. So without any further ado let's get into the Pro Pilot Assist system. One of the easiest ways to figure out if a Nissan has Pro Pilot Assist or not is by the front emblem here. So if the Nissan logo is nice and flat and it's covered in this piece of plastic that means it has Pro Pilot Assist and the reason for that is the normal logo is just stuck on there with some 3M and with some glue and it doesn't have any extra features. This here is actually a radar that picks up cars in front of it, and that's how you can tell. Now while from the outside, the front emblem is the easiest way to tell if you have Pro Pilot Assist or not, the inside it gets even easier because you're either going to have the button or you're not going to have the button. This blue button on the steering wheel is going to be your way to activate Pro Pilot Assist if you have it on your model. Obviously if you've never used it before, it can be pretty intimidating and a semi-autonomous driving mode can be a pretty scary thing. But it's really easy to activate once you get used to it, and it is definitely freaky the first time, but you can get used to it pretty fast. Of course, this works in the city, this works in the country, as long as your car can see the lines on either side of the road, it'll work. So here in Canada, it snows all winter long, it's not going to work then, but it's the summer right now, so I get to test it out. To activate it, it's super easy, you just get up to the speed that you want to be, so this road is 80 kilometers an hour, so you get up to 80 kilometers an hour, you hit the blue button, and then you hit set, and now it is in cruise control mode. You wait for that little ding there, and then the steering wheel will turn green, the little logo, and now it is completely in control. I don't have to brake, I don't have to accelerate, and it is gonna steer for me as well. So the green emblem just means the steering is activated, and it can see the lines on either side, and it's gonna keep you right in the middle. But as soon as you turn it on, whether it can see the lines or not, it's always gonna accelerate and brake for you to keep you at that speed that you wanna be. So in our case, it's gonna be 80 kilometers an hour. We're currently going down a hill, I can feel it braking for me and I don't have to do any steering. It's doing everything by itself. We're going around a corner right now. It's doing everything by itself. My hands are off and after you have them off for a few seconds, it will get mad at you. The screen will turn red and ask you to put your hands back on. It can feel the weight of your hands as it tries to make little adjustments. It's super weird having the car drive for you. There's also a plus and minus button on the steering wheel right next to the blue Pro Pilot Assist button that will activate an increase in speed or a decrease in speed. We're coming up to a four-way stop, so I just put my foot on the brake and it is going to turn off completely and now I'm in full control again. So currently I'm following this F-150. I'm going 70 kilometers an hour, so I'm not doing anything right now. It is steering for me currently. And if I were to bump this up to, let's say, 90, which I have it set up right now, it won't speed up because it wants to keep a distance between that F-150 and me. So it is doing so by measuring the distance between us and making sure I'm following the speed that he's going, even though I have it set to a higher speed. This never gets old, oh my goodness. There's a button here with a few lines on it, and that gives you the option of one, two, or three car lengths between the car in front of you and your Rogue. So now that that F-150 is moved out of the way, I'll be speeding up to 90 kilometers an hour, and I will now be overtaking it. And I will go to this speed until I catch up to the next F-150, and then it'll do the same thing. It works very similarly at a red light and a stop sign as well. Currently the light up here is red. Oh, speed demon in your Honda. It's gonna break for me here. I'm not gonna do anything. It's doing all this braking. I'm not doing anything right now because we're at a red light. 
no, no Siri. <laughs> so uh, it slowed down all by itself there. I didn't do a single thing. It's coming to a complete stop. There we go. And it's gonna set off again. I'm not doing any of this. It's just waiting for that F-150 to get the proper length away and then it's gonna speed up. So the reason it turned off there is because we went through a set of lights and it lost where the lines were because obviously there's no lines in the middle of that junction there. But it just turned back on because it picked up the lines again. There are a few ways to turn off ProPilot Assist. The easiest one is by putting your foot onto the brake and it'll immediately turn everything off and then you're in full control. And the second way is with the cancel button right here. There's a corner coming up here. Now it won't do 90 degree turns. It won't, you know, come up to that turn, stop, turn, and then continue onwards again. But it will do long bends up to a certain degree here. So I'm at 60 and it is doing all of this by itself. I'm not doing any of this. Just bizarre. The car right now is driving itself. I'm not doing anything. You know, it's gonna go up this hill at 80 kilometers an hour. After I do this for long enough, obviously again, it gets mad at me. So I'll put my hands back on the steering wheel. That's just a safety uh, precaution, just in case something does happen. It wants to make sure that you're conscious and that you can actually drive the car if it suddenly can't see the lines anymore, going from a main road onto a dirt road or whatever it may be. Now here's a really cool thing that I'm definitely not gonna demonstrate, but it's good to know. With the profile assist, if you have your hands off the steering wheel for long enough and you just don't put them back on, the car will warn you and after about 10 seconds, the car will assume that you've passed out, fallen asleep, whatever it is. What will happen is the car will pull itself over, it'll turn the engine off, turn on the e-brake, start honking the horn and flashing the lights to try and wake you up and to alert other people around you that you've fallen asleep. I just think that's absolutely insane. Now, in comparison to other car companies that do this, so I'm sure that Honda, Hyundai, and all those other companies have a similar system, the way that theirs works is by kind of ping-ponging you back and forth. So in between the two lines, you're kind of just bouncing off the lines as you're going along the road, and it's just making those corrections as you're about to cross over those lines. ProPilot Assist is a step up from that, and one step closer to being fully autonomous for the single reason that it is constantly measuring where the lines are and keeping you bang in the middle of those so it's not just bouncing you off these invisible barriers over the lines. In a sense, it's really creepy. It feels like a ghost is driving your car and turning your steering wheel. It's absolutely bizarre. Brake here and now I'm in full control again just so I can turn in here. We're gonna make a little pit stop. While we're on our way to this little surprise, I should probably explain Let's treat stop signs and red lights the exact same. If you're the front of the pack, you're coming up to a red light, then your car won't stop. You have to do that by yourself. This system does not recognize red lights and it won't recognize stop signs. But here's the cool part. If a car is in front of you and then the red light goes off, it will be constantly measuring that car in front of you, making sure you keep a proper distance away from it that you can set by yourself and it'll slow down and come to a complete stop behind that car at that red light and obviously the same thing at a stop sign as well. And then what will happen is it turns on the e-brake and then as soon as the light goes green again, it'll turn off the e-brake and it will continue on following that car. Very cool. So just over here, if you believe it or not, they are filming the new Ghostbusters movie in that. They put that there in the middle of the field. They built that just for the movie. I don't know, it's creepy and cool all at the same time. I stopped by here last night and they said that Bill Murray was here a couple of days ago and all the kid actors and I think that is pretty cool. But just near my house, they are doing this in the middle of nowhere in the country. But now you have the general idea of what ProPilot Assist can do and what it's capable of, let's just go over a few of the smaller minor details. If you're somebody that uses a cruise control all the time because you're constantly doing hour plus drives, then I think this is gonna be a huge help and I'm sure you have lots of little questions. For example, what happens when you wanna change lanes and the steering is trying to keep you locked in between those two lines? Well, it's as simple as just 
indicating and what it'll do is it'll just turn off the steering assist and then you can change lanes it'll still brake and accelerate for you and then once you're into that new lane you just stop indicating it'll find the new lines and it'll keep going forwards with the steering assist while assisting you in between those two new lines. Now in terms of if you have to have both your hands on the steering wheel or not when you have the steering assist on the answer is no really all you need is enough weight on the steering wheel that when it makes its minor little adjustments that it can feel the weight of your hand there because that's how it knows if you have a hand on the steering wheel or not so what I like to do is when I have this on you don't necessarily have to have both hands on the steering wheel I just take two fingers I just relax it off the bottom of the steering wheel here and I just relax my arm and that's enough weight for the steering wheel to know that my hand is on the steering wheel and that I'm still conscious and I can get in control if the car needs me to be. Another good question is where is the camera? And this is a more important question than you might actually think. The camera is just behind the rear view mirror up here and it is constantly looking forwards for those two lines on the road. But here's where it gets interesting. If you have to replace your windscreen because you've got a chip or a crack or whatever it is and you replace your windscreen for a new one, you have to make sure that when they put the camera camera back on with the rear view mirror that it's all aligned properly or you're going to run into some problems. When I was driving a road before, this is the one and only time that I've ever ran into an issue with ProPilot Assist. I set it up, I was on the highway, it was the first time using it on that specific road. I had done it before so I knew what to expect and basically it tried to go over the white line on the right hand side and it was just a big ditch down there so I had to steer back, I had to wrestle the steering. Obviously if you apply enough force that system will turn off and give you the steering again but it was very bizarre and it didn't know what was going on and I thought why the heck did this thing just try and drive me into the ditch well what happened was they replaced the windscreen on that specific rogue and when they put the camera back they didn't calibrate it so that brings up the interesting point of how much will it cost to replace the, uh, the windscreen on a rogue that has ProPilot Assist it's going to be more expensive because they have to run a system they have to check to make sure it's aligned properly and obviously all of that just equates to more dollars when you go to get that done. Now I think it's worth mentioning that you can have certain parts of ProPilot Assist turned on. For example, lane detection, which most new cars have now. So if you drive over the lane, like I'll do here just a little bit, it's gonna correct me and beep at me. There you go, so oh yeah, it's pushing me back. And that'll happen because I just had that part turned on. It isn't driving itself right now, that was just something that I had there as a backup. Also, if the steering by itself part freaks you out a little bit, there's a button down here that you can press that turns off the automatic steering assist, if you wanna call it that, and it'll just do the braking and accelerating for you as most new cruise controls do. Now, personally, in my opinion, I think this feature is really cool. It's hilarious watching your friends react to this for the first time. Doing it for myself for the first time was insane. It's just a weird little trip you can go on and it, it puts a smile on your face almost every single time. But I don't think it's necessarily worth it to go out of your way and buy a brand new car just to get this feature. If you're in the market for a new car and you were gonna get a Rogue anyway, then yeah, sure, slap this on there. And I don't think it's gonna be the end of the world. It's a cool feature, it's fun to have. But it kind of makes me think, what are cars gonna be like in five or 10 years? That's uh, gonna be interesting to find out. But of course, now I wanna hear from you guys and what you think of this new feature on some Nissans. Just remember, it's the Rogue, the Ultima, and the Qashqai. I've seen the Qashqai ad about a billion and one times, so I'm pretty sure you've seen the ad as well, at least somewhere. And I wanna hear from you guys on what you think of this feature on the Rogue, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, if you think it's not ready yet, if it was too early to release something like this. Personally, I think it works fantastically, but if if you're gonna release a system like this, maybe they should have held off until they could have gone fully autonomous or something along those lines. But nonetheless, that's gonna be your opinion, so let me know down in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you like what I do here on this channel, feel free to subscribe and like this video, and don't forget to go follow me on Instagram at officialthomaswarren. Peace.